Hi everyone and welcome to my February 2020 update from here in the loft. Um, it's been a really, really busy month, um, both with work and here on the layout. And I'm really pleased to say that what I've been able to do is get my entire second loop, double loop, in here the branch line um, and all the back scenes in um, and the start of all the landscaping work as well in so I've got absolutely loads done this is a long video uh, I do apologize for that but what I've been doing is documenting me installing all of this over the last month um, hopefully if anybody who's not um, used Woodland Scenics risers um, the uh, power base from DCC concepts you'll hopefully maybe learn something from this if not forward through those bits um, but without further ado as I say, it's a long video so I'm going to jump straight into it and you can see my progress from over the last month um, before that though huge thank you to my new subscribers um, I'm doing this basically just to document what I'm working on hopefully somebody will find it useful or entertaining um, but I really do appreciate people who are subscribing and follow me if it's the first video you've watched um, take a look back you can see the layout basically from bare baseboards up um, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button thanks guys here we go okay so the first job is back scenes um, I'm not going to record me putting on the back scenes um, there is plenty of good videos on YouTube of people putting on back scenes but what I'm going to do is show you what I'm using um, so I'm going to be using first of all from ID back scenes uh, series 2 or 3 village in N-Gage uh, it contains 3 meters in 2 sections by 23 centimeters tall um, so that's the first thing I'm going to be using and that is going to go from the end where the viaduct is um, along to where my country slash heritage station is going to be and then from there it's then going to connect on to this gauge master uh, industrial back scene large GM 706 and that will go the rest of the way down to the scenic break where we move back into the town centre um, now this is not a specific N-gauge back scene um, but that's fine this was the picture that I wanted for the back scene um, so I will cut it down and make it work um, so I will get these attached and as soon as they're attached I will come back and show you um, what's been done uh, at the moment just as a reminder all we have is a whole lot of blue boards so I thought what we'd do is just take a minute to talk about inclines uh, or declines depending on which way you're working um, but my last layout had a 4% incline on it uh, and it was far too steep. I struggled with, I couldn't get any steamers up it or it was just too steep. It didn't look very prototypical and it wasn't great. So this time I am going for a 2% incline and I do want to have an incline um, just because I think it gives a little bit of interest in the layout as opposed to it all being very, very flat. Um, so what I'm using is Woodland Scenics risers. Um, there's many different ways to do this. You could do it with plywood and blocks of wood and slowly build it up. But to try and get, especially an N-gauge, to try and get the inclines nice and smooth and gradual, um, that just seems like a lot of work to me when there's something available on the market um, that's going to do the job for me and do the job amply well. Um, now, I'm doing this video because they are a bit of a learning curve. Um, the last time I used these, as I say, I was too steep. Uh, I didn't actually cover them, so I was having, even though I put cork bed on, um, there were still gaps which caused me all kinds of problems. Um, so, live and learn and all that. Um, and as you can see, I've started to install the incline here. Now, I am lucky that I've got a big space here in the loft for the layout, um, but as you can see, I've got all of this back area to work on uh, and it's going to need an incline and a decline at both ends. And this is what I'm using, Woodland Scenics products. Um, I find these the easiest thing to use. Now you can buy kits, you can buy a 2% and a 4% kit, which um, you'll need if you've got an incline and a decline, you'll need two kits. Um, but I couldn't find any in my local model shop and I wanted them quite quickly. So I have bought the individual components to make the incline and the decline. Um, and basically what you need is the first one, two, three packages that you see there. You need two of this one in the middle. Uh, and then this at this end is optional, but I'm going to use this and I'll explain why in a little moment. Um, but if I just zoom in there, you can see 
what the products are if the camera decides to there we go focus um so i have a two percent incline decline starter set st1412 i have two packets of the risers half inch um st1406 and then i have a packet of the one inch risers st1407 um, these are so simple to use what i'm going to do is i'm just going to turn the camera around and then i'll show you how they work okay. um, one thing i did forget to mention is this stuff um foam tack glue from woodland scenics uh i don't know if it's got product number yeah st1444 um this is not the cheapest but it does work really, really well. So the first thing you need for your incline or decline is a 2% or you can also get three or 4% um, incline starter. Now, if I hold this up to the camera sideways, you can hopefully see the incline on there. Let's pretend we're doing an incline so I don't have to keep saying incline and decline. Really, really simple. Work out where it's gonna go. Put it down, put some glue underneath it, job done. This is going to take the track from this end, which is flush with my baseboard, pretty much. By the time you put a bit of foam track bed on there, let me grab a piece to show you what I mean. So you're going to take your track bed. I use the Woodland Scenics track bed. It's the foam stuff. I just find it easier than messing on, cutting up bits of cork and things like that. Um, and because of the profile on it, you're gonna get a nice ballast shoulder on there as well. So basically this will go from your baseboard straight onto the incline and it's nice and smooth, just like that. And you can fit and engage two tracks side by side using this Woodland Scenics inclines as well. So this is gonna take my incline from zero to half an inch at this end over here. Now I'm gonna be increasing everything to two inches um, that's just the height I've decided to go to. Um, I think in engage that's going to give us quite a good incline. So what I've done, first of all, I took the 2% incline decline starter set, which is taking us from zero to half an inch. The next thing I'm going to need is a half inch riser. Now this has no incline or decline on it at all. It's half an inch from there to there. So if you imagine putting this next to the half inch side there. What we've now got, and I can't fit all this on camera, but at this end is where we start, up to half an inch, and then this continues to be half an inch. Of course, what we're trying to do is an incline. So what we do then is we take another 2% starter. We add that on top of our second piece, our half inch. And then now what we've got, we start at this end down here. Let me move the camera around and down. Oh, wrong way, sorry. Uh, so we're starting down here at flush with the baseboard. And now we've used three pieces of polystyrene. And when I get right the way around to here, we're now up to one inch. So we've got the first piece, which goes from baseboard to half an inch. Then we've got a half inch um, riser. And on top of that, we have another one of the 2% inclines, which goes from zero, so half an inch at that end, to an half an inch at that end, on top of the half inch riser. So we're now already at one inch. The next thing we do is we take a one inch riser. So just like the half inch one, this is one inch from that end, right the way along to this end. We're then, I'm gonna to have to move this along. So we've got the first piece, the second piece, we then take our one inch riser, attach it there, and we've now gone one inch all the way along. Take another incline decline starter at 2%, add that on, and now what we've got is we've got a long to height of one and a half inches. I'm hoping this is making sense. Um, it is really, really simple, really straightforward. So the final thing we do is we take a one inch riser, a half inch riser, and an incline piece, um, that on there, and we've now gone from one and a half inches to two inches. So just to summarize that, because I'm struggling to get it all on the camera, 
the first piece it takes you from flat to half an inch then we're using a half inch and a riser to take us from half an inch to one inch then the next piece we're using is a one inch with an incline on it and that takes us from one inch at this end to one and a half inches at this end and then the final piece is a one inch a half inch all the way along and then an incline piece and that's going to take us from one and a half inches to two inches and the reason that foam tack glue is so important is because it gets tacky pretty much straight away and you're sandwiching on top of each other pieces of foam now the one thing that i did forget to mention um, is to make sure when you're stacking these to go alternate ways so if you see there at the moment if i put them on top of each other we've got the gap running there so all i do is turn one that way one that way and it's just going to give you line it up properly there we go a little bit more stability because if you look there the joints don't run straight up um, and then glue them down so basically what i have on my layout um let me turn the camera around okay so what we have is a two percent incline right here this takes it from baseboard to half an inch there's my finger there then we have a half inch riser with another two percent incline on so that's taking it from half an inch along to here where it's one inch then i have a one inch riser with another incline on top of it and if i can move the camera around sorry a bit shaky um that's going to take it from one inch there round to here where we get to one and a half inches and then i'm using the final piece which isn't glued in yet we have a one inch riser a half inch riser and a two percent incline that'll get glued in place there by which point we will be at two percent and then the thing that i told you that i use that you don't necessarily need to use is the two percent risers which are over there still in the box and that will attach there and that'll be a flat two inches and that will run all the way down the baseboard until we get to the incline at the other end and if you look down there by those orange weights right at the end you can see i've just started to put the incline in down there uh, the very first piece is there right there um, so I'm going to crack on now and get these inclines and declines in place um, for you to see this is there it is um, and once that's all done I will come back to you um, so let me show you what I have done let me grab the camera um, so there you can see a nice gradual incline that goes from zero to two inches uh, so at this point here we're at two inches uh, this is all glued down it's the next day from when i start filming this i was busy working all day yesterday um, on this and it left it overnight for the glue to dry and if i swing around um, there is the other decline or incline um, going from two inches two percent and if you remember this actually disappears behind this back scene um so that if i look over here there it is just heading down and away um so let's just take you back around now there's obviously a gap here at the moment right here where we get a two two inches which is the top of the incline and it ends now what you could do is you could buy the wooden ceiling two inch risers and that will quite simply connect onto there and you just continue that all the way along until you get and uh, join the two pieces up together however i am not going to do that um, because i've got a whole load of track and things that's going to be happening over here where are we at? There we are. Um, I have got a whole load of sheets of polystyrene and I've already been busy carving them away to the right shape that I need to fill all these gaps on the layout. Now, one other thing to note, back scene has gone on. However, always the case, even though I'd measured it, I am a piece short. I've got a big gap there. Um, so I've been onto the internet 
and I've ordered another one of these um, backgrounds here which I'm going to connect on over here where there's a gap and then it'll end where it moves into the industrial scene there's going to be quite a sharp break between the two back scenes but I'm not too worried about that um, because that's where my engine shed's going to be um, and I'll have group of trees behind the engine shed to kind of work as a scenic break between the two areas because that's what I want to achieve. I want to achieve my industrial area with a power station at that end and then this end will be my nice country area um, and country scene. Now you'll notice there's a gap here right here and this is two inches. So if you imagine once this forms in you won't see that that's going to build that area up. Now I've made quite a bit of progress on this. I do have a hot foam cutter, which I've been using um, to chop up and carve all this foam. Um, but I'm up in the loft, it let off a lot of fumes. So I went down in the garage um, to carve this. So you won't have got to see me carving it, but it's really, really simple. It plugs in, it's hot, and it lets you carve chunks out. And if I just rest this camera here, I will show you what I've done with this first piece, um, which is going to go on this end. So I've got to squeeze in between the beams here in the loft, and that will fit perfectly in there, like that. And as you can see, I've already cut the embankment down. Now, I've done probably about 80% of the work with the form that needs to go on here. Um, this end, there's a gap. Uh, because there will be the scenic break going across here at some point but i'm not entirely sure yet where it's going but remember the main purpose of what i'm trying to do is to get the foundation in so that i can get the track laid so i can have my second double track loop running around the loft so that's the purpose of it so all i'm going to do is i'm just going to use the box standard pva get this glued down um, i'm going to glue the whole lot down and um it shouldn't take too long As you can see, that is all of the polystyrene in. Uh, that's the incline and decline in, and most of the back scene until the next bit arrives in. Um, so just to show you, that's where we have uh, the first incline decline coming around there. Uh, I've got some polystyrene in there. You've got the two fast lines in front. Uh, we then have a gap here. Uh, and this is where there's going to be a bridge. I'm just waiting for that bridge um, to come from N Scenic. Um, you'll notice I've carved, um, started to carve such as the hillsides in the um, access points that are going to be roads. They're just really roughly carved at the moment um, to give me an idea of where things are going to go. Everything's got to be covered in plaster and so on yet. Um, but it just helps me kind of know where things are going. Um, we've got a nice smooth bit here which is going to have retaining wall on. Um, then we continue down, so we've got a nice flat area here for the station to go in. And then as we move down and round, you can see there I've got a nice flat area to work for um, the power station. Uh, we've got the decline coming down over here, or incline depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, and then I've also put in some embankments to go around my high speed lines as well. Um, and then there's this little area here, um, which is going to be eventually a disused track, which will lead to where my hatch is 
um, which is going to have something on it, which I've not decided yet. Um, so with that in place, I'm going to pop some weights on it, leave it overnight um, to dry. I've got the radiator on up here in the loft, so it's nice and warm. Uh, it is pretty well insulated up here as well. It doesn't really drop below 14, 15 degrees. Um, so that's going to help with the drying time as well. Um, and then the next job is to start to prepare um, these risers ready for the um, track bed to go down. Now, as I mentioned previously, I'm going to be using the Woodland Scenics track bed. It's what I've used everywhere else. It gives you a nice ballast shoulder. But what I don't want, and the one downside to these Woodland Scenics risers is, if I can get the camera on there, all of these holes, which are just an absolute nightmare for ballast falling down and trying to scenic. So what I'm going to be doing is strips of paper, just bog standard, cheap A4 white paper, the kind of stuff you get from the supermarket, you know, the value range, um, tearing this into strips and basically using it like paper mache, uh, papier mache, however you want to say it, um, tearing it into strips, cover it in PVA and then get those strips just over there, just all the way along. It doesn't need to be very thick. All it's there for is just to create a barrier to stop ballast and things like that going down. Then once that's done, we'll give it all a quick coat of brown. Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so the first side of the incline is complete. Um, I have got the track bed in, I've got the formers in, the foam formers, and I've also now added my um, power base um, on there as well. Um, so just to show you what I'm using, um, and then I'm gonna head down that end and let you see me install it down there uh, but you can see i've painted in brown just on the incline and basically where the track's going to go just as a rough guide um, but let me turn the camera around and let me show you what it is that i use um, for my track okay so this is the track bed that i use um, i know some people like to use um, cork and things like that um, but i use this it's a woodland scenics product uh, n scale strips um, of track bed this is a bulk packet called st1462 um, there's 36 pieces in here and i've got two of these on amazon quite cheap but i've got some out here that you can see and basically it's got a really nice three millimeter height on it so you can get a really nice ballast shoulder on there so if you're looking for a ballast shoulder uh, this works I've used cork in the past and I just find it a little bit of a mess on um, especially trying to get it around corners now this goes around corners really really well and the reason for that is it has a line um, scored on it just there and all you do is run your knife straight down that line split it in half and there's some here that I've prepared ready for the next corners and because it's then two thin strips they just go around the corners really really well um, what i use to fasten this down is good old copy decks um, you can pick this up all over the place it absolutely stinks and it marks your clothes if you get it on your clothes um, but it works really really well once that's down and that's had a little bit of time to dry i'm then going to add my power base um, you may or may not be familiar with this this is let me just move that because it has my address on it um, that's it this is a DCC Concepts product. It comes in N gauge and double O gauge. Uh, and if you have a look on the DCC Concepts um, YouTube page, you'll see some videos which shows you just how good this is. It's not something you can go back 
and reinstall after you've got the track down and the track's all ballasted it needs to be put in first so that's the reason why i'm doing it this way now you can buy all the elements for this stuff this product separately but this is a starter set it's like a value starter set um and this includes in here five meters of the power base and 12 magnets for 12 locals basically um and in here you've got all these little pieces so there's some here that i've lifted out and it's literally just metal metal strips that the magnet's going to be um, drawn to uh, it's got blue plastic film on one side and it's silver on the other so once this track bed's down i'm going to put copy decks on the track bed i'm going to put copy decks onto the shiny side of these not the blue side the shiny side um get these down get them weighed down and left to dry and then once it's fully dry you can come back and just peel off um, this blue film to reveal the shiny silver side and then once you've got the track base down i'm just going to move around because you can see i've got it down here and i've started to take the blue protective film off I need to take the rest off but your track is just going to sit i do this one-handed straight on top of it just like that uh, so if I zoom in a little bit, there we go. Um, so the track's going to sit on there, and then that magnet is going to pull through there. They're really strong magnets. Um, my layout's DCC, so I will have dropper wires attached to the back of the track. And if you look in the magnets, there is holes, so I can just drill straight through there and put the dropper wire straight down. Um, so nice, simple. Before we do any track, though, I need to finish getting this track bed down and get the magnets down and then leave it overnight to dry. Um, so that is my job for right now, and um, you can follow me doing it. Okay, so that's that all done. Uh, track bed is down and the magnets are down as well. Um, next job is to basically leave this uh, overnight to dry. Um, but that's it done all the way down there. Now, obviously I forgot to mention earlier, but you only need your power base on your up line. Um, you don't need it on the down line because it doesn't need any power, obviously. Um, but basically, that's that done. I'm going to leave that and I will get back to you as soon as it's all dry. Um, probably going to give it 48 hours just because of some commitments I've got on the next day or two. Um, but then I'll be back and we will start getting the track laid. So we'll hopefully we'll have some trains running soon. So you join me back. Um, been a little bit longer than I said. I think I said next couple of days. It's actually a week and a half later. Um, and I'm pleased to report that I've actually made loads of progress. Um, the track is all down. Trains are running. All of the dropper wires are all linked in. Um, the auto frogs for the points are wired in as well. Um, I've got loads done. Unfortunately, I realized this video was going to be really really long so i didn't film each of the steps of me laying the track uh, there is plenty of videos on youtube on track laying um, i'm using code 55 pico but there's plenty of other videos of other kinds of um, pico track both engage and double o and the principles are all very very similar um so let me show you what we've got um so starting down at this end uh, where the risers were we have the new double track coming up up to here um, once we get up to this point we have a long crossing an electro frog, frog long crossing um, which then leads on to two points so we've got a normal right hand point and a three-way point and then what this means is if we keep coming up where we come into the station um, where I've got a train park which I'm going to use in my intro video so you've got the two tracks that come along and then you can either basically continue going straight along 
to where there's two more tracks still to go in, which are to go down to the power station, or you come over and you've got the up and the down line, which move down the incline. Um, and if I just turn around, now this camera's going to do it really, really slowly, um, but if I make my way around, you can see now none of these buildings are in yet. They're just placed. Um, oh, camera. There we go. I've got my bridge in, the bridge I was waiting for from Scenic that came, that's been built. And then this track continues to go all the way around, um, where then you're on the other incline slash decline, and then it disappears behind that back scene, um, which is where there will eventually be a tunnel mouth and that track will disappear. Um, just going to take you down to the power station area so you can see what's going on down there. Um, now remember that my main mission back at the start of this video was to get four lines so that I can have four trains running. One, two, three, four. So that is done. Um, where there's work still to be done is where we come off that junction there and make our way down. Now the idea is going to be that you'll come out of the station into a heritage railway. Um, so I don't yet have a turntable, but I've got a cut out there, which is the size of the Pico turntable, um, just so I can work things out. I've got a couple of lines here, which I'm gonna to use to store some coaches for the heritage station. Uh, and then these two lines here will continue down and they will then feed into my power station down there. Now I haven't finished laying that track yet and that's not a priority for me at the moment. I've laid some track out to give me an idea of what I wanna do. Um, I can play around with that. I've actually run out of points. Um, so I've used some of these Pico templates that you can get from the Pico website to work out what I want. Um, some of them have moved around a little bit, but it gives you an idea. Um, and the idea being with those, I can work out exactly how many points I need so that I'm not wasting money buying points that are just going to sit in a drawer um but by my reckoning i need about six points and a 15 quid each um it's not a small purchase so we'll leave that um until i've got a little bit of spare money and then i will get them done um so i'm conscious this video has i've got turned into a bit of a long one um to say the least um so thank you for sticking with me and um as you can see that's what we've got now. So I'm really happy with the progress that I've made. Uh, we've basically got two scenes. We've got one scene over here, which is going to be countryside um, and the heritage slash branch line station. And that will continue around. And then we'll move from here where I'm going to have some trees in this area here, just as a scene break, quite a big scene break of trees there. And then we then move down into the industrial area. So that basically I end up with two different scenes within this back area of the loft, um, which should make for some really nice running shots. Um, so that's it for now, for this month. Uh, my next job, I'm gonna be turning my attention back over to the town scene and back to, if you remember, the um, DMU area and also um, that area surrounding that side of town. So that's gonna be my next thing, my next job for the next month. and. Um, I will be back then. In the meantime, if you've got any questions, any comments, any thoughts, please leave them down in the comments. Um, as I said earlier at the beginning of the video, if you're new, please do subscribe. And once again, to my new subscribers, thank you for subscribing. I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.